trying to catch my breath so I don't refer to this uh, this maneuver going on uh, today as uh, as uh, chicken crap. All right, but this is nonsense. It is colorful and it is downright smelly on Capitol Hill as the tax debate unfurls. Yes, and I like how we tried to hold back just a little <laughs> bit, but we never hold back here. Top line starts right now. Hello and welcome to ABC News Top Line. I'm Rick Klein. And I'm Amy Walter. Every day at noon Eastern, we're right here bringing you the latest in politics, everything you need to know. It's twitter.com slash rickkline, twitter.com slash Amy E. Walter. I am in a break from being juror number four and glad to be back here on the set. I know, but we're going to lose you again, maybe. Perhaps deliberations begin next week. All It'll right. Be fun. Thank you for helping to make our system go, Rick. All right, we're going to start off with the breaking news today, our first Top Line on the ground, President Obama landing today, Bagram Air, <coughs> Air Base, excuse me. Uh, there he is getting off of the plane set to meet with the troops as well as Karzai, although bad weather preventing a face to face meeting. They may just have to chat on the phone. You travel all that way and all that's the, the way. Best you'd you think do. you could find another way to do that. Of course, we know we have big deadlines right. coming. The question, though, Rick, is this president now has spent a lot of time overseas since the midterm elections which were really a referendum on the economy. What is this going to be a problem? Well, th and this is, this is again where he's out, out of the country when he's off the news because right. the big news today is actually very much on the home front. We expected the president to address, as he usually does, the new jobs figures. Uh, and, of course, he is in a, in a different a different realm today different in a different country. In, yes. Many time zones away. And, the court, the, as we said, the question today, where are the jobs? And the, the answer is not right now, right here in this economy. Disappointing job numbers across the board. An anemic 39,000 jobs created by the economy last month. That's about 100,000 less than economists expected. Unemployment up to 9.8 percent. And, of course, this comes in the middle of a, of a raging debate now over tax cuts and unemployment benefits. In some ways, it may strengthen the hand for both. Both those who say we got to extend tax cuts and those At who say we time. need unemployment That's right. benefits. So it may end up coming exactly where we thought it was, <laughs> which was, which we've been talking about all along, a temporary extension of tax cuts right. paired with unemployment benefits that continue. All right. No second act. Hillary Clinton at a town hall in Bahrain. I don't know. That just town sounds, hall. there's something that just sounds <laughs> strange about a town hall in Bahrain. Telling reporters there that uh, this is her last public uh, job in politics, that is. In fact, here she says, I think I'll serve as Secretary of State as my last public position and then probably go back to advocacy work, particularly on behalf of women and children and particularly around the world. But, Rick, I didn't see, is that really a Sherman-esque statement? Does that mean I will not take a position if offered as Vice President? Or a, or a Secretary of Defense. I mean, that's the, look, there's nothing that she can say. Uh, she can quote Sherman himself, uh, and people will still ask these questions. But she's been as clear as she can yes. that she doesn't have other political ambitions, that she intends this to be, as she says here, her last job in public service. But we're not going to believe her. There's something also called the Clinton Global Initiative. That, I've heard of it. Yes. I, I guess, it, it, and it's global <clears throat> indeed. And finally today, Debt Dud, the Deficit Commission, has reported back its findings and the vote has taken place and they were unable to muster the votes that they needed to to get a, a formal recommendation from the deficit commission that would have sent the plan on to congress so instead we're talking about the way that the debate has been shaped and i have to say i'm a little bit impressed in that in that sense amy because this has dominated the discussion yep. at the very least and it's the first bipartisan thing that we've seen happen i mean the, the fact that you could have 11 of these folks many of whom are on opposite sides of every issue agree to talk about this stuff and agree to agree to a plan is pretty impressive. That's right. And we're going to get to a member of that uh, that uh, debt commission in a few moments as soon as he's with us and our producers will let us know uh, when uh, when Senator Conrad joins us. But in the meantime, we have uh, Major Garrett here from from National Journal, uh, excellent correspondent for that excellent magazine with Thank this new website and all that. And Major, let's let's start actually with Afghanistan. This is sure. as Amy mentioned, President uh, spends spent a good amount of time out out of the country. What's the thinking behind a trip like this at a time like this? Well, remember the president has a crucial review this month of his Afghanistan policy, which will become 12 months old at the end of this month. And that review is going to be his response to the criticism from the left and even some beginning to see criticism on the right that the strategy, though well-intentioned, is simply not producing results fast enough. So he wants to go to Afghanistan, talk with everyone personally. He would have much preferred to see Hamid Karzai face to face and say, listen, we are partners in this one way or the other. And I need some things from you, you need some things from me, and solidify that person-to-person -person contact. So when he comes back and does the review and then announces the 
results of that review, he can do, some, do so with a higher degree of credibility about what he has agreed to with Karzai, what are the areas of disagreement and how they go forward. Because I think as a practical political matter, there are six to nine more months the president has before those within the left wing of his party become increasingly agitated about the direction of this policy. Well, and, and going to that, though, do you think there is also some frustration from folks on the Hill that they'd like to see the president dig in a little bit more on negotiations on taxes and give them a little more direction? Well, th they would like to see more direction, and they were taking a vote yesterday to give the president that very direction in the pl po politics and nature of Borja va a vacuum. And right now, there's a vacuum as far as the, what the White House will or will not do. When David Axelrod says we have to live in the world the way it exists, Democrats say, wait a minute. <laughs> right. No, 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 like no let's that. take some votes. Let's mm -hmm. have an argument. Let's tease this debate out and see where the polling numbers fall. Even before this debate was joined, most of the polling data suggested the vast, Amer not the vast majority, but a majority of the American public was with Democrats on keep 250000 and below, extend those tax cuts, but we're not really big on extending them for all Americans, right. particularly right. those most wealthy. So Democrats say, let's have the fight, especially in the context of this unemployment benefits extension battle. The president appears unwilling and unlikely in the few day, next few days to have that fight, much more willing to compromise. In fact, they look likely to, to, to yeah. give in on this key point that he made during, during the campaign. And what Republicans just say, sure, we'll uh, negotiate this. We'll just negotiate the magnitude of our victory. Right. Six months, a year, two years, three years, sure. Yeah, we'll negotiate those. those things, but it's a total victory. And all I right. want to ask you about the context of all of this. We're spending all this additional money. We're adding to the debt. We're adding to the deficit. And we got the Deficit Commission coming back today uh, to get a, a, maybe a stronger than expected re uh, support from the commissioners, but not enough to that this is the formal report. They didn't get the key number of votes major. Does the White House need to own this and it can really get behind this and say, look, this is, this is something, if, if this is of any chance of going anywhere, the White House have to, has to say this is ours? A lot of people have to own this for it to go anywhere, not just the White House. And I would say structurally, this has been the most adept and adroit way of dealing with this issue that I've ever seen from a commission. Erskine Bowles and Alan Simpson knew a month ago this was not going to get 14 of the 18 votes. So what do they do? They kept rolling out their ideas, and we spent three weeks evaluating those ideas at a very high level. If they had done what every other set of commissioners <laughs> had done previously, wait, know they're going to have the vote, and walk, slink off the stage, yeah. this would have been a one-day story. It's instead been a three-week story, and it's required a lot of people to ask themselves deeper questions about where they're going to stand and what they're going to do about the deficit. So that structural level, I would say, was very adept. Right. One quick question for you. You wrote a great piece today on Don't Ask, Don't Tell, mm -hmm. and and John McCain, yes. and that John McCain now obviously now become a vocal critic of this, even though in the past he looked supportive of this. He sounded supportive happened. at least in 2006 when he said memorably, if the military leadership comes to me and says we need to change this policy, I'll be open to that. Well, he now no longer considers Secretary of, Ga Secretary of, State's Ga <laughs> Secretary of Defense Gates a member of the military leadership, nor Admiral, Admiral, Mullen. Yeah. Admiral Mike Mullen, chairman mm -hmm. of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Now, McCain is not entirely isolated. The service chiefs are either ambivalent or opposed, and he's sticking with them. But McCain is the principal reason this is not moving forward in right. the Senate. And until he moves, it's a dead issue. All right. Major Garrett from National Journal, we appreciate you being with us. Thank you very much for having me.